So how in the world do you get the right amount of food on board your boat when you're going cruising? Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. This is a topic that comes up over and over again, particularly for those who are going chartering, but it applies even if you're going on your own boat. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Infinity, the most trusted name in woven vinyl flooring in the marine industry. Since 2008, Infinity has offered boat owners premier flooring options proven to withstand even the most demanding environments. Each of their products is equipped with UV-stable, fade resistance, and antimicrobial technology, giving them both durability and style that can't be matched. Thinking about kicking carpet to the curb? Make the switch to Infinity and see the difference true luxury makes. Visit infinitylwv.com and use the coupon code PODCAST for 50% off samples. I had this question from a reader the other day, and I asked her permission to use it on the podcast. She summed it up pretty well. I seem to try to anticipate all their needs and desires and end up with wasted food. So I guess I'm looking for ideas on how to manage my expectations of their expectations. (laughs) So we don't waste food, but we have plenty. Any thoughts? If you remember that when you're cruising and you're sailing and you're eating on board, you're actually doing the same kind of thing that you're doing in your house. And I do think that most people have more skills and more capabilities than they give themselves credit for. So yeah, I'd start with planning the way you do at home. But there are a number of things that are different on board. There are five things in particular that I can think of that are different about being on a boat than particularly if you're chartering, than if you're at home. In the house, you've got your own stash of spices and seasonings. You don't have to bring every single thing with you. If you want to add a little extra pinch of oregano or a little extra pinch of basil or some garlic salt, you probably have it. When you need to restock, it's just a matter of buying one or two, not trying to decide on all of them. And that's definitely different when you're chartering. In your house, if you're like me, And even if you're in a much smaller house, you've got space in the house to store extras. And again, particularly if you're chartering or even just going for a week on your own boat, but you don't want to leave anything on board when you get back, you don't actually have the space or the inclination or the thinking or the, I don't know, not even the brain power sometimes to buy three extra cans of black beans just because they're on sale, even if you love black beans. Number three, you also don't have the luxury of, oh, look, I'm just going to make rice and beans if we're out of everything else, because actually you don't have all the extra things and ways of creating food kind of out of nothing that you do when you're at home. Number four, at home, you're probably likely to be cooking and eating on a set schedule, whereas when you're chartering or on board in general, and chartering in particular, because I think things get a little bit looser when you're chartering, you're out enjoying yourself, and there's some time to just fill maybe with a little snacking. But on a charter, there might be more snacking happening. And when there's more snacking, then you need more food. And then you're worried about making sure you have enough food even more. And number five, and this is a biggie, is at home, if you're feeling the need to supplement your supplies or to add more stuff to your to your stash, you just hop in the car and go off to the place that has what you want to buy. If you just want to buy one thing, you might run to that particular specialty store. On the boat, part of the joy is in not having to run those errands. Sure, if you're ashore in some new port and you feel like exploring and you come across a cool little spot that might have something that sounds yummy, yes, you want to buy it. But to have to run out to go buy something? That's a little bit more of a chore and not probably something that we want to do when we're on a charter. At least I don't. Same time, you still want that special something. So what do you do? So yes, there are definitely some ways that chartering and being on a boat is different than being at home. And so what are some tips and tricks that you can try to be able to make sure you have enough food but not have a ton left over at the end? I've come up with six tips you can use to cover your bases, but probably don't have a lot of leftover food at the end of the week. So 
first of all, practice before you go. If you're going cruising for a week or two, track what you eat for a week or two and use this as the basis for amounts as well as the seasonings. Let's say you eat Mexican style four times out of two weeks, then you definitely want to make sure that you take things like cumin and oregano with you. Start thinking about how you might take small amounts and how you might use it all up. This leads right into number two, to take your own spices. Figure out what spices and seasonings you usually enjoy and pack them in with you. You don't have to buy new stuff at all. If you're really organized, you can even pack those spices in a medicine box or in a small zipper plastic bags like the little tiny snack ones um, or even small containers. A big thing if you're chartering is you want to think about having fewer dinners. This may sound a little bit counterintuitive, but if you're chartering for six nights, you might want to plan food and buy food for four dinners because this gives you the option to go out, which sometimes is nice to do, to eat up all the leftovers the last night, which if you think about it, you can make a really interesting salad. You might have a pasta dish. Quesadillas are a great way to use up all those odds and ends. A pack of flour tortillas or corn tortillas doesn't take up much room at all. And I will tell you, they're a fantastic way to use up all kinds of leftovers put together. You want to take more snacks with you, which again, sounds counterintuitive. If you're trying to make sure you don't take too much stuff, why would you take more snacks? Well, if you're working on fewer dinners, you might want to take more snacks. Snacks, they're so easy to carry. And the thing is, they can easily be lunch or dinner. I think about things like crackers and cheese, nuts and hummus and olives and sausage. These can serve double and maybe even triple duty. They could be lunch for you one day. They can be sundown or appetizers or even the, oh my God, it's two in the afternoon and I'm starving. What can I eat? And you just grab something there. A box of crackers serves a whole lot of people and two eight ounce chunks of cheese, which each come individually wrapped and they last for a while without refrigeration. And they also don't take up that much space in the fridge. Awesome. A vacuum sealed sausage log can be an emergency ration that is so easy to bring home if you don't open it up when you're out there. Tip number five, take one non-perishable emergency dinner with you. A pound of pasta and a jar of sauce, a package of rice and beans. These things can be dinner in a pinch and items that don't need to be refrigerated are super easy to transport and they're also easy to bring back or to give away to somebody when you're done with your charter if you don't wanna bring them home. And I mentioned this earlier, but leftovers are king. And you can make some great, amazing meals by repurposing them. You don't have to just have what you had one night again. You can roll them into tortillas, add some cheese, add some crunch, heat it up until the cheese melts. You can make an omelet out of a bunch of leftovers. You can do a stir fry amazingly well. If you follow some of these tips, you might still have a few things left at the end of the cruise, but I will say this should be a pretty good start to making sure you don't come back with a ton of extra food and you also won't starve when you're out there. Happy cruising. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We aim to answer all of your cruising questions. And I love getting questions because it's really wonderful to be able to answer what people are really wondering about. So go ahead, drop us a note. We would love to answer any question you have. Have a great week. Slow 